Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I am sorry it's going to be a long video, I will try and cut it short. But it's about three episodes of what I've watched up to now of a TV show that I am loving called Dollface, which is on Disney+. Plus, And it features one of my favourite actresses, Kat Dennings. She's the main uh, star of the show. So, and her character is called Jules. Now we're going to go straight into it all. Jules has been with her boyfriend for the last five years and he breaks up with her out of the blue. So when they're going for a car ride, she is um, saying about all the plans that they've got. And basically it's all plans that he has got with his work and his sister's wedding. So basically Jules doesn't have any plans. She's just there for the ride because she's the boyfriend it's like she's the girlfriend of the boyfriend, if you know what I mean. So, in Joel's mind, she's like alone now and she needs to connect with her friends. And he leaves her on top of this hill looking, at, looking over um, LA and this coach comes filled with girls now i'm not sure if this is jules imagination with the coach pull, pulling up or if it's actually real because sometimes you can always tell little things that are real but i don't believe all this is real i think it's all in jules head and she gets on this bus and the driver is, has a cat's head um so that bit you definitely know is imagination. So I was giggling quite a bit about that. Anyway, when Jules goes to this bus station, all the other girls meet up with their other girlfriends. And Jules needs to reconnect with hers. But they've kind of expired. So she goes to Madison's hoping for the best and ends up getting the door slammed in the face after she says, Madison says, oh my god, Jeremy broke up with you. Anyway, Jules tries again and Madison lets her in, gives her a whole speech of being trying to get into contact with you, being trying to get you out of, without, within those five years. And it basically shows that when Jules got with Jeremy, she put her friends on hold and didn't bother, which tends to happen with a lot of girlfriends and boyfriends. They just forget about all their actual friends and they focus on the couple themselves. Uh, Jules likes to clean when she's upset, so she's picking up all Madison's clothes and Madison tells her a few home truths and that she Jules has to change if she wants to get back in Madison's good books and be friends again. So Jules is like, okay, but you know I can't do the friend thing. You know I can't click with other girls and everything. So Madison again gives her a speech. Anyway, Jules tries... Stella, one of her other friends, who's more of a wild, spit, free spirit girl, and she's like, just do something that you wouldn't do, get Madison to come along, and that will put Madison back in the good books. So, Jules is like, oh, okay, uh, my, f my workplace is having this party, but I don't really talk to the girls, and Stella's like, just go for it, bite the bull, bull for the bullet, or whatever it is. And Jules tries to talk to three Allisons, and we end up finding out one of them is not actually called Allison. Um, I actually like to call her Weird Allison. The she gets invited to the party and puts the other two on the list. When they meet at the party, Jules feel thinks, "Oh, they all know each other, so I don't feel so as bad. I feel happier." Well, none of the girls, the two friends, don't know these three, so. So yeah, so Jules is like, okay, then why did you all scream and hug each other, kiss each other and everything? Basically, that's what girls do now when they just meet random, random lot. <laughs> um, 
they can have a dance on the dance floor but Jules doesn't feel comfortable they do photos where she's a bit more comfy when Stella needs to go to the toilet um, Madison says come on Jules we'll go to the bathroom Jules doesn't want to go to the bathroom Madison has a go at her they end up losing Stella then weird Alison comes over to um, Jules and says her name is actually Izzy not Alison she only did it to follow this trend and everything so so yes yeah, so she's very weird that Alison and you'll find out more in the next two episodes about her and why why is she well I don't know if you find out why she's weird but she, she gets weirder as it goes on um Stella of course is like she's not kidnapped but she's gone off with this other guy that as an easy uh says about so they look quickly run out the club and basically the van disappears madison goes back in to see if she can get any information whilst jules picks up a lot of rubbish outside the club and people are looking and she says i clean when i'm upset and someone behind her walks up and says her name and it's jeremy and Madison comes out the club like I've just left you for two minutes and you're already seeing him or something and basically Madison um Jules and Jeremy tell Madison things and then Mad uh, Jules ends up telling Jeremy like stuff you and everything I'm hanging out with Madison I'm doing this so so like sort of kind of thing uh, they go and find Stella, they find her, and so yeah, basically Jules is like happy that they're coming friends again, um, and all of the stuff, and I like at the end of the episode, she's brushing her teeth and she puts Jeremy's toothbrush in the um, toilet. Even though he says he's going to go and live with his sister, he doesn't bother taking his own toothbrush. Now I have missed some of the little bits out, but I don't feel like that's important to tell you. Because like I said, I want to try and cut this video as short as possible. So, episode 2. It's called Home Body and Jules is trying to run up some stairs, but a phone is giving her like, a little backlash. Again, Jules' imagination. So she does actually go for a run. But when she turns home, she can hear someone in the house that she's staying at, at Jeremy's. And it turns out to be Jeremy. And he's like, oh, it's this football thing. You normally stay, but I need you to go. So Jules has to leave. She has a, um, a jigsaw on the dashboard in her car. And while she's driving, all of a sudden this fog comes in. And again, it's another daydream. So she pulls over and this screen turns white and it's the cat lady cat head lady again giving her some advice and everything uh, she gets a phone call from madison jules does and she's jules turns around to the, the cat head lady and says about it and she goes oh they're going to brunch where do they go well basically you see all these women getting dressed up and basically they're going to a church brunch um now what gets me is the three girls, the, they have different styles. Madison is top high fashion, so she's dressed very posh. Then you've got Stella, who's like just casually cool, but still smart enough to be presentable. And then you've got Jules, who's just in a pair of trousers and a, sh and a shirt, um, like a, a blouse. So each three had, had like different fashions and I like that about all three of them, different styles and each of them, each of the uh, girls are different in how they see things. Now Jules ends up saying that she's still living at Jeremy's, has she seen a house on Craigslist? Madison's no, you're not getting this house on Craigslist. Stella's like why don't you travel like cost to Costa Rica and then 
Madison and Jewel, uh, Madison and Stella having a go at each other, like thinking what's best for Jules, and then Jules' daydream comes again. The table is splitting in half, and Jules is like holding on to each side like this, and underneath like this, like hell pit under her. Like oh my god, she's gonna go to hell because she's that checked if she doesn't decide which one she should do, travel or look at the, or do what Madison tells her. Madison ends up showing Jules this apartment. It's like fantastic and everything, but Jules can't afford it. And basically she's like, don't you have to ask for a raise? And Jules is scared to ask for a raise to her boss because her boss isn't exactly the boss you can ask for a raise for. She's like very high end snobbery kind of one. Um, so when Jules asks, tries to ask for a raise, she braves it. The boss is like talking to this like other woman saying about things and not really paying attention to Jules and Jules loses her temper a little and breaks the table and the boss is shocked Jules runs out and meets Stella and Stella basically helps her like choose all these warm layers cuts to go wherever she's going uh, but of course Jules gets stuck in this cut and it costs like £385 and you can suddenly see Stella feel bad about what she's just done. Like, oh my god, that actually is a lot for a cut and everything. And can Jules, like, actually afford this? So, so yes. Um, we see that Jules talks to Izzy Allison, weird person. And she invites Jules to live with her. So they, she, Jules does like a temporary run, but it's not that good. Uh, Izzy doesn't have any boundaries at all. She sits on the toilet whilst Jules is having a shower. She puts this face mask on her when they sit down and then Jules is getting texts from both Stella and Madison who are still at war with each other so Izzy starts messaging them uh, not on the behalf of Jules because Jules can't really see because it's like this can you remember the um, cloud mask where all of a sudden you're just like getting very like cloudy up and something's happened to her face um, so she can't like get out her eyes and stuff. Izzy does the wrong thing really bad and it causes the all three of them but basically not Jules but Izzy, Stella, Madison to have this like argument kind of thing but it's mainly aimed at Madison and uh, Madison and Stella. Jules finally gets her phone back but sprains her ankle. They go to the hospital. Jules is seen quick. Um, and basically she's seen quick because Madison's got a boyfriend who works there and he's quite old. Um, but she says old but she means she's he's old. Um, she te Jules tells Izzy that she's not very good. A person to have a roommate and it turns out it's true because she has like had eight roommates within such a short amount of time so it just shows that something's wrong with Izzy and how she is um so yeah uh, so the girls are weak on so like connect and say sorry in their way and Jules goes for the Craigslist house and she's happy. So the other two girls um, help, no, all the girls help her move in. Not the other two Allisons, but Izzy Allison. Uh, and 
they're just all happy and everything and Jeremy is left with the key and some disinfected whites and he kind of looks I don't know if he looks relieved or sad relieved that Jules has gone it's kind of hard to put a a thought on how he is actually feeling so yeah it's a good episode i mean is he really does get on my nerves a lot but the actress she's very good she actually is like a comedian in real life so they have brought that into her character for izzy so episode three which is called mystery brunette and this one is basically a based around, um, not really based around Jules as much, it's more based around Madison and Izzy. Um, so the girls at work are like taking things from the other girls because the boss thinks that items should give them like comfort or pleasure or something, it's really weird. And Izzy asks Jules, can you put this smell on the computer website? And Jules is like, I can't do that and everything. And she's like, oh my god, you're like, you're like, she kind of like thinks, oh my god, you are weird. Like, my boss is weird, you're weird. Kind of she doesn't say it, but her actions say it. She gets her foot, Madis Madison calls Jules, and Jules ends up... Um, getting told that she needs to come out to this uh, publisher party and Madison definitely wants her there and everything but she's like I haven't got anything to wear or anything and she doesn't want to go out cute darkness and she's in a daydream again Jules and it's called should she go out with that crazy cat lady I'm gonna call her now because <laughs> she just keeps popping up and I feel like this is like me, like should I go out like playing all this thing in my head. <sighs> yeah, so then all of a sudden the screen goes black and Jules goes into one of her daydreams and it's like a game show with the cat head lady and it's like should she go out and behind each door is something um but all of a sudden we're back to normal again after a little daydream and stella brings some outfits for jules to wear so she can go straight to the party and everything um izzy asks stella for help and izzy um, Stella tells Izzy that she needs to stop doing this and that basically trying to be nice saying that stop being weird you're just, just too full of yourself kind of thing she's trying to say it in a nice way so Stella starts helping Izzy out whilst Madison and Jules are at this publishing party that um, Madison's in charge of but Jules accidentally tells a guy about the publisher of the book actually eats meat even though she's done a book for vegetarian Madison gets annoyed so they try and find this guy again and Stella says oh I mean I think it was, I think Stella contacts him saying oh come to this party Joey Lawrence is announcing he's going to die so they find the guy tell the guy look if you don't publish that you can publish this so they all go into the taxi go to Joan and Laura's house meet Stella and Izzy and basically they find out this show that's going on at Joe and Lauren's house is actually a magic trick and Madison hates magic tricks. She actually freaks out about magic. So she ends up fainting when Joey actually dies through this magic trick. And 
it causes a problem because oh yeah because they they see her talk Madison talking to an older guy who they think is Mad Jules thinks is her boyfriend, um but it's not it's her um manager kind of thing. Uh, so when Madison wakes up, she's like, I can't believe you think he was my boyfriend, but said he's all there. So yeah, not that much older, but he is older. So it's quite kind of like how much older. <laughs> um, um. So Joey ends up going into the ambulance, and the paramedic turns around, and it's Joey himself, not Joey Tribbiani, Joey Lawrence. So it's like, oh my god, how did you pull off that stunt? And then the girls are all talking, apart from Izzy, Izzy's disappeared somewhere until she comes back and Madison's phone goes off and says that Izzy's in the headlands and it's like, who's this mystery brunette? And Izzy's like, like pulling her phone like, ah, because Joey is apparently dead. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a bad episode, um, I'm just trying to think how I think I would rate that episode, I mean the first one I would rate definitely 10 out of 10 because you meet everyone, the second episode I was saying 9 out of 10 but this one's more like 6 out of 10, like I said Izzy really drives me mad. Uh, Stella does her best with everything in life, but she's like such a free spirit. Madison is high end on a high horse, basically. She wants the best for everybody, she wants the best for herself. And Jules just wants to please everyone, um, but still trampy herself. So, yeah, I can't wait to see what episode four is. I'm not sure what day these actually come out. I thought it was a Monday, but. It is Monday today whilst I'm filming this and for some reason the episode 4 is not out so it must be coming out later today or it could be a different day so I'm not really sure but yeah go and check it out it is it is really good I can't wait for the rest of the season so yeah all right everybody I'm sorry it's long-winded I've tried my best to do this I will do definitely see episode 4 on its own uh, and 